the case that forms the basis for this discussion is, is a 16-year-old boy who presents with a convulsion while eating lunch at school. Uh, and, and the convulsion started with him flinging his soda up into the air. Uh, he had no history of, um, uh, no prior history of any risk factors other than sensitivity to bright lights and video games. Um, he was seen by a neurologist. The neurologist did an exam, some blood tests, did an MRI, which was, which was normal, and then did an EEG, which demonstrated a 4 hertz generalized spike and wave pattern um, and a photoparoxysmal response at flash rates of 12, 14, 16, and 18 hertz. Uh, two months after that first incident, um, he had another convulsion. And interestingly, his teachers also reported that he would stare into space in class. Um, he was ultimately diagnosed with partial seizures um, with secondarily generalized tonic-clonic seizures. He was initially treated with levetiracetam, 500 milligrams twice a day, but soon after starting therapy, he experienced fatigue uh, and dizziness, and uh, his parents observed that he was more aggressive, more irritable at home, and, and this was also being reported to the parents by his teachers. So if we put the EEG aside, because the EEG um, is part of the testing that takes this from a diagnosis of a seizure or two seizures and moves it in a direction of a classification of an epilepsy or an epilepsy syndrome. And, and there are various things that can do that. Uh, it, it can be either an EEG, it can be an imaging study, it can be a gen genetic mutation, all these things, it, it can be even family history. So all these things go in to the piece of the puzzle that enables us or sometimes doesn't enable us to make the diagnosis of an epilepsy syndrome. Uh, in this case, we have two clinical seizures in a <clears throat> previously healthy adolescent who then has an EEG that provides additional information. So if we take it a step at a time, the first, first piece of information is that uh, he has a seizure that is characterized initially by him throwing a soda into the air and then him having a, what is described as a generalized tonic-clonic seizure, and then a week later, another similar seizure. So if we start at the top and we say, okay, this is a seizure that clinically looks like a generalized tonic-clonic seizure, the first question, is this a generalized seizure or is this a focal seizure that has evolved into a generalized seizure? And with the information that we have from the clinical story, one would have to say, I don't know, it could be either. Um, and then the question is, well, how do we then look into it further? Well, looking into it further to see whether it's one or the other would require either more clinical information, which we don't have, or additional tests like an EEG and or an MRI. In this case, the only information we have is an EEG, and the EEG shows findings that are very typical and consistent with a generalized seizure and not a focal seizure evolving into a, a generalized seizure. So I think that's the first point of discussion in this case. It's perfectly reasonable under the circumstances to say this adolescent had a generalized seizure, and I don't know whether it's A or whether it's B. However, after you've done the EEG, then it would be more appropriate to say the EEG findings are more consistent with a generalized seizure, and therefore he would have to be treated as if he had a generalized seizure. Video EEG monitoring is a, a significant uh, tool that we use um, in diagnosing patients with, with epilepsy or in characterizing the nature of the seizures. So th this case that we were discussing, uh, assuming the EEG wouldn't have shown us something that was classic for a generalized seizure, assuming it was normal and we really didn't and the patient was having more frequent seizures, a video EEG would may have helped us
to one, characterize the nature of the EEG because it's a longer, longer study, and also to be able to capture these episodes and enable us to actually diagnose a more specific epilepsy syndrome. Uh, the, the other scenario is in patients who, who are having events that appear to be seizures but are not clearly seizures, and under those circumstances, video EEG may enable us to discriminate between one and the other. Another question that comes up, and it comes up in this patient as well, is what tools do you use to get the maximum information from the patient in order to come up with a diagnosis that is as specific as possible? And in many cases, you can't do that. But, but that's often where you have to go back in terms of the clinical history, where if you're suspicious that they have a specific seizure type, you are going to ask about certain things in the history that the patient may not have volunteered because they thought they weren't important, or they're so overwhelmed with having had a generalized tonic-clonic seizure that they don't think to mention the other issue. So I think added clinical information is really important. Family history uh, is, is significant. Uh, the need, especially uh, in, in 2020, with, with highly evolved genetic mutation testing that ever expanding has provided us with a diagnosis of a genetic mutation as the cause of the patient's seizures that really wasn't available to us uh, 20 years ago. Um, and, and our ability to say this patient has generalized seizures with this specific mutation is, is a very different way of describing epilepsy than it had been previously. Um, so, Genetic mutation testing, uh, imaging studies, family history, clinical history, EEG, a lot of those things we already had, but being able to add these other parameters in has allowed us to be much more specific with the diagnosis. So to get back to this adolescent, um, in this case, if you weren't sure whether the seizure was focal at onset or generalized, then doing an imaging study would be perfectly appropriate to see if there was structural pathology that was causing the patient's seizures. Uh, once you have an EEG that demonstrates a generalized spike wave on the EEG, the likelihood of the imaging study providing any additional information is very small. Um, this is the kind of case, though, where doing uh, genetic mutation studies or an epilepsy panel may provide additional information. Um, uh, especially if there's a positive family history of seizures.